Good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is Jack, and I'll be one of your power plant guides. Uh, the other guy is Kathy, who's up at the top of the stairs. To let you know where we are on this map, the visitor center would roughly be right about here. And we all travel through the elevators 537 feet through the Rock of Black Canyon. And then we just now walked through the tunnel to we reach the room here above the 30-foot penstock pipe that you might have seen. All right, construction for Hoover Dam started in 1931, and the first task that the workers had to overcome was diverting the flow of the Colorado River. This was accomplished by building four diversion tunnels, two on the Arizona side, two on the Nevada side, each of which is about 4,000 feet in length and 50 feet in diameter once they lined it with three feet of concrete. If you look up, you can see that concrete right now. So we are one of the original diversion tunnels. They built an upper coffer dam, this was to encourage the flow of the river into the diversion tunnels. And then they built a lower coffer dam, which was to prevent the water from backing up into what would become the dry construction area. Excuse me. The workers had to um, dig down through 130 feet of sediment in order to reach bedrock. And at that point, they could begin um, pouring the concrete. This process started on June 6, 1933. Every 90 seconds, eight cubic yards of concrete would be arriving at the dam site. And just so you know, eight cubic yards is roughly enough to fill a cement truck. So every 90 seconds, for 24 hours a day, the cement truck is arriving seven days a week for nearly two years until the dam reached its present height of 726 feet. About 6.6 .6 million tons of concrete are in Hoover Dam, and that would be enough to build a sidewalk four feet wide and three inches thick around the entire circumference of the planet. Next step, fill the lake. The workers cut off three diversion tunnels, leaving the fourth open in order for to prevent the continued flow of the Colorado River downstream. And with that, the lake could begin to fill. This process started in 1935, and it took six and a half years to create Lake Mead, which would become the largest man-made reservoir in the United States. Once the lake was filled and the power plant was ready for the water, they sealed off the fourth tunnel. All of these were sealed with 50 by 50 foot steel bulkhead gates and also 400 feet of concrete plugs. The outer diversion tunnels, the remaining stretches, were used to create spillways. So this is in case the dam is, uh, the, the lake is going to overflow, it doesn't go over the top of the dam itself. These have only been used twice. The first time was in 1941 as an operational test. The second time was in 1983 when record snow melt in the Colorado Rockies came downstream and rose the lake level here to within seven feet of the top of the dam. At that point, the spillways were activated and the water was able to be discharged 